Hello there. Welcome to Talking Europe. I'm Catherine Nicholson and we are today looking down on the continent from far, far away from up in space. Well, almost. That's because the European Space Agency is now opening up applications to the general public to become an astronaut. It's the stuff of dreams for many kids and adults out there and part of a multi-billion euro space strategy shared by more than 20 countries here in Europe. Well, I am delighted to be interviewing today one of the European Space Agency's existing roster of astronauts and the first Italian ever to do a spacewalk. Luca Parmitano, thank you very much for being on Talking Europe. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Well, I mentioned that uh, you're speaking to us as uh, ESA is on a new mission to find its next astronauts. Uh, they're going to be hiring between four and six staff astronauts uh, like yourself and up to 20 reserves, which is something a bit new. The applications open from the end of March to the end of May and the process is going to be quite long. The successful candidates should only find out in October of 2022. So um, a question you've probably never been asked before, I'm sure. What's it like being an astronaut? When we become astronauts, we are trained to do all sorts of different activities that really deviate from our normal life, mm -hmm. from uh, science to, uh, to engineering, to piloting, uh, to leading or following. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have to be very, very flexible and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, I think that one thing that really fascinates about me about my job is that it really satisfies my universal curiosity. It offers opportunities to continually learn something new. And that doesn't happen in, in, every, in every job. It's also, if I might say, from my point of view, a really dangerous job by the sound of it. In fact, ESA made a point of flagging up as they were organising this recruitment some of the dangerous aspects of it. Um, I suppose so people know what they're getting into. For example, high levels of radiation, eyesight changes possibly, um, issues about bone density, loss while you're up in space. One might ask, why would you put yourself through all of that? Well, you're asking a, a test pilot that comes from a fighter pilot community. So uh, it's not that I don't have a, a, a sensibility for danger, but danger is, is everywhere. I mean, you can cross the street in a, in a, uh, in a busy city and, and, and be run over a car. So uh, what we, I, don't, I don't focus really on the danger, but I, I like to think about what do we do to, uh, to, to improve it. So uh, you talk about radiation. Absolutely, when you go out, when you go outside of the Earth's uh, atmosphere, you are exposed to more radiation. But as long as we put in place uh, something to, to prevent that from being harmful, then uh, we are improving uh, our our chances. So I spent uh, a year in space, and uh, it, currently uh, we we don't expect that radiation absorption to be anything more than a worker. Uh, that 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 works his life in a uh, in a nuclear plant, for example. Uh, for bone density, we have we have put in place uh, countermeasures where we can train in orbit physically two hours a day for long duration missions, so that our bones and our muscles stay in, in very good shape. I, um, again, I am I'm a good example of that. I came back twice, and my bone density didn't really change, and I maintained myself in, in good shape. And most astronauts that you see coming back nowadays are in very, very good shape. There's a, a real focus on diversity in this recruitment drive, we ought to say. Uh, the ESA really encouraging women to apply uh, who've been uh, somewhat underrepresented before. Uh, I believe only one of the seven current active astronauts is a woman, Samantha Cristoforetti, for, also from Italy. Um, uh, what do you believe it would bring to ESA's missions to have more women involved as astronauts? it would bring uh, richness. Um, we, are, we are talking about resources here. When, when you look at, at the pool of people that applied for the selection last time, we had about 85% 85, 85 of the participants being male, about 15% of, uh, of the participants being female. Uh, and then it, that is reflected really in the, in the, final, in the final selection that uh, only one out of seven uh, is a woman. Uh, we are missing 50% of the population. And that 50% of the population has incredible capability uh, to, to give. Uh, th these are resources that, that we are not able to, uh, to, to use and, and to, uh, to enjoy. So we really want 
to be able to include as many people, as many different people as possible, mm-hmm. so that we can really select a wide variety of backgrounds of all kinds and use those resources for the better of the of the space agency, but in the end of the space program and Europe itself. Uh, ESA is also talking about diversity uh, in terms of physicality. They want to recruit one reserve astronaut with some kind of physical impairment. They're, they're calling it a para-astronaut, like para-athletes or Paralympics. Um, this would be a world first. ESA has acknowledged uh, there are sort of technical challenges involved, depending on the person's uh, specific physicality. Uh, so again, why is ESA wanting to do this? So we are talking about a para-astronaut project because we want to we think that the person that will be selected for this will be an astronaut and again it's some other resources we want people that are cognitively uh, prepared that are ready for for this kind of challenge and we want to learn what we can do to make space more inclusive for everybody because again it's some other resources we have um i we know that uh, with our experience, uh, having included um, uh, people with disabilities in other parts of the space environment, we know how much we're missing if we, don't, if, if we cannot uh, use these people also mm. in the operational field. So mm. there are steps that need to be taken, mm. and this is a very first step uh, so that we can learn about it and what we can do. And perhaps an example to other organizations. Um, now, in terms of ESA's missions, uh, they've talked about later wanting to fly to the surface of the moon. Um, and I, I'd just like to ask you about that. What's the interest of going to the moon? There have been a lot of lunar missions uh, in history. We stopped uh, in, in 1972 um, because of the political environment, because of other challenges. We have been focusing for the past 20 years on low Earth orbit. And now we think we are ready to go back to the moon for several reasons. One is, again, exploration. It's just our nature. It's what we do. We explore. We explore because we want to know more about our planet, planet Earth. And the moon is basically a a museum of what has happened for the past four billion years. Mm. And so we want to learn more about the universe, about the Earth, and about what happened. We are talking about capability, ingenuity. Uh, How do we get there? How do we make our presence more stable? How can we explore environments that have never been explored, for example, underground on the moon? And then there is a matter of resources. We want to think about uh, capabilities and resources that are present on the moon and not so much on the Earth. We want to, to understand, is there a way to exploit the resources without damaging the environment on the moon? Is there, is, is there something we can learn from this exploration that then we can apply on our own planet mm. in order to preserve the resources that we have? So there is a lot of interest because this is the next step of technology. It's the next step of exploration. And it's it really is, is being there all this time for us to, uh, to, to achieve this dream. I would just like to ask you, as well as being scientists and uh, part of this whole uh, system, a strategic aspect, uh, you're also ambassadors um, and you get to do some fun stuff as well. Um, you were the first DJ in space, uh, DJing live <coughs> for a music festival in Ibiza in 2019. That just begs the question, why? Well, that is a great question. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that most of the things I do, I consider fun. Uh, whether it's a spacewalk or the launch or the re-entry of performing a very complex ex- uh, uh, experiment in orbit, I, I, think, I think my job is a lot of fun. But being a DJ, I think in, in that case, it was about communicating. At least, at least that was my idea. Uh, as you can see, I'm very interested in music, and I believe music is a universal language. Anybody, anybody in the world, no matter where you're from, if you're from... Uh, from the smallest town in in, in, in Asia uh, mm. or Africa or uh, or in Europe, uh, everybody understands music. Uh, it, it's a very powerful way of communicating. And so I thought, hey, if I can if I can show the space station and what we do, and I, if I can show that astronauts are real people that <laughs> also like to take a break and have fun, then I'm communicating something. I'm sending a mm. message. And, uh, and it's a message of peace. It's a message of, um, of rejoicing. And so when they, when they asked me, hey, do you think you can do a DJ set from space? I thought, no, I'm 
don't think I can, but I'm willing to learn. <laughs> and so they, they show me how to, how to perform a DJ set on a small tablet, reproducing a DJ console. And uh, there I was a couple of months mm -hmm. later, floating upside down and sending music to the ground. A brilliant experience. I've just got time for one last question. Your advice that you might give to anybody watching this program right now who might be thinking of applying? Sure. Um, this is this is the, the thing that I that I wished uh, somebody had told me when I was applying is that if you if you have what it takes to be to be an astronaut, and you probably know you do if you're thinking of applying, then it's already there. You don't need to change right now. You don't need to uh, to show something or prove prove anything to anybody. All you need to do to do is show up and uh, introduce yourself, present yourself as you are, with your experience, your background, and then um, everything everything will, will will go will go as it should. So uh, a lot of you already have what it takes to be to be astronauts. Uh, just. Uh, let it let it show. Let it go. Let, let mm -hmm. it show through the selection process. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you mm -hmm. here where I am right now at the European Astronaut Center. Luca Pamitano, thank you so much for those very inspiring words. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you for watching as well. And do stay tuned. In part two of the program, we're going to be looking a bit more closely at Europe's space ambitions. Stay with us for part two of Talking Europe.